welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to use a vacuum pump. Now this one in particular did not come with instruction manual, so I will be kind of talking through it all. So if you need some help or if you're interested in a vacuum pump for any of your resin projects, then stay tuned. <music> came with this vacuum pump and I will link it in my Amazon link below so make sure you check the description if you want to get yourself one of these beauties. I do highly recommend them because after figuring out how to work this darn thing it is an amazing asset to my resin projects. Now the problem though is it did not tell me how everything was supposed to work and which way this little doodad was supposed to go. Ah. There it goes. This little doodad and this little doodad. I didn't know which way they were all supposed to turn. And then the gauge, all that kind of stuff. I wasn't quite sure what I should be doing. Um, but it did come with this. So at least I knew how to operate this super heavy machinery. Now, I did have to get some extra oil because it did um, come out of the packaging uh, whenever it got here. So all the oil was on the outside, which kind of sucked. So I just went ahead and bought extra oil and filled it up. That's the gas. That was the other thing that kind of threw me off. This says gas. That's actually where the oil is supposed to go and it'll show you on the side. So the user's manual is extremely short. Um, it kind of goes over the parts and the model number, what you should be, um, I guess what your particular model consists of, and then possible troubleshooting issues. It does caution you and how to install or make sure that this is working properly. So they do send you instructions on how to make sure that the heaviest piece of material is working efficiently, which is great. But then it comes with a tube, these silver things, which, I don't know what they're called, but I know how they work. And so I already knew how to put that together. Um, this, I didn't know which way they should have been open or closed or which one meant it was open or closed. And then it came with two of these blue things. I haven't had need to use my second one yet. Now you just, it's as simple as connecting this tube to this side and then tightening it super tight with a small screwdriver. And then when you are looking at the gauge, you want it to be, you want it to be right at around negative 25. I'm gonna show you two different projects that I did. One was initially, I went to put it in the vacuum chamber and this was while I was trying it out and it exploded over the top. Yes, I'm gonna show you that here. Y'all, today is not my day. <laughs> First time using the vacuum pot, and this is what happens. I'm pretty sure I did everything I was supposed to, so not sure what went wrong. And then this one I put inside the vacuum chamber and it's just fine. So, look at the bubble difference. Look at all those bubbles. And then look at this one, no bubbles. It's a crappy mold, which I didn't realize until this cast. See those flaws in the mold? I didn't even notice those until I casted them with the vacuum chamber and there were no bubbles to distract me. So yeah, it's crazy. This one was done in the exact same one and it has that same flaw, but it's so much harder to see. Mostly because this has a mix of colors too and this one's a solid color, but still. Now I'm gonna to explain to you how I was able to get my cast with limited to no bubbles. It is just normal resin that I am using. I'm not using a casting resin and I'm mixing it just the same as I would any other resin. Now, once I go ahead and pour it into my mold, then I'm gonna go ahead and begin my repetitive process with the vacuum chamber. I did like having the clear top on this pot because it did allow me to see what was going on inside. And if the bubbles were coming too high, then I would be able to turn my machine off, release the air, that way the bubbles go back down. 
So I seal the lid by pulling up on the outside edge and pushing down on the lid to create that seal and allow it to vacuum up the bubbles. It sits in there for about one minute while it is taking all those bubbles up, as many as they possibly can. And then you can see here, I'm using the red toggle switch and slowly releasing that air. Once all that pressure comes back down, then I take the lid off and use a blowtorch to pop the bubbles. You can see though that there is still a line through the middle of the largest part of my cast. And that's the bubbles that are trying to come up to the top. They just haven't been able to. So this process needs to be done a few times until you're fully satisfied with the lack of bubbles and the clarity that you can see with your project. On this particular project, I think it took me five times of doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through the bubbles so that way you can see the repetitiveness of going up and down, up and down, up and down, releasing air pressure, all that good stuff, blowtorch. And then once I'm happy with it, if I don't need my vacuum chamber, I just leave it in there because it is a hair free, dust free zone. And I'm gonna go ahead and not mess around with it. All right, on this very last one, you can see that there are not a bunch of bubbles. And so it's kind of a consistent leveled layer. At this point, it would be safe to go ahead and increase the pressure um, of that vacuum and have it vacuum up more bubbles at that point. The reason I leave a space in there is because of the amount of bubbles that do come up. If you don't leave that space, the bubbles will overflow like I showed you in that fail video um, right here at the beginning before I started all of this. If you didn't see that, please rewind and go back to that because it's very important to understand what happens if you just leave the thing in there and not do anything. This is not a pressure pot. You can't just leave it and forget it. Um, but. I do think that it is nice to be able to see. And I could also do this for coasters. I can put one coaster in, do my process, put the second coaster in, do my process, so on and, four, four, so on and so forth until I do my set of four or set of six. And that way I don't have any issues with bubbles being at the bottom of the cast, which in turn, when you unmold it, ends up being at the top. And I think that this is a very, very valuable resource to have in your repertoire. I do think that I've answered all the questions though, but if I didn't, please don't hesitate to comment below because I have a vacuum chamber here and I can go ahead and play around with it if I didn't answer the question or I'm not sure what it is, I can play around with it here and help you figure that answer out before you purchase it yourself. I wanna say I paid about a hundred bucks for this, but it is well worth the investment. I think it is an extremely valuable resource to have for anyone who does any type of casting um, or has the individual coaster molds that they could put in there as well. And that's it, everyone. I am fairly new to working with a vacuum chamber, but I wanted to help you out because the resources were not there for me when I started with it. And if there are any questions that you want clarified that were not covered, then please leave them in the comments below. I would love to help out. I have a vacuum chamber here. I can work with it and answer your questions before you have to actually make a purchase. But I do highly recommend it because it is awesome to see your coasters so flawless <laughs> and not have any issues with bubbles whatsoever. I am extremely grateful that I have this and I keep it right underneath my work table here because it is something that I use more often than not now. As long as I have a small enough project, I like to use this. It's also great that I can take out the projects that I'm working on and set them aside after I've done my vacuum chamber process and then I can set them aside into my curing area and do something else or I can just clean this have things clean and move on to something else. Also, do not forget that June, the first Monday in June, next week, y'all next week, <laughs> next week is the start of the competitions 
for the award. So make sure you head on over to my Facebook page to check out all the details. I will link it in the description below. Or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I will answer them as soon as I see them. And I hope you guys have a blessed week. I will see you on Monday.